Hey everybody, welcome back to 5-ish Minute Reviews, something that uh, I've kind of enjoyed, a little bit of a after a while unboxing of some knives, and uh, having time to uh, play around with them all for a while to give you a, a decent first impression of them. First up here, we got a fairly uh, well-known knife, this is a Sheepdog from Kaiser, however, this is the um, the initial version of the, uh, the clutch lock system, it's a crossbar lock, but they actually give you a couple of holes on the uh, the liners for them to adjust the uh, the spring tension of the, uh, the Omega springs there and you might think yeah this is uh, this is absolutely a sheepdog but it is different from a sheepdog <laughs> there is uh, there is some differences here this was um, I don't remember whose exclusive this was, Blade HQ or Knife Center, whichever one offered the uh, the 10V variants. Um, I've tried to die the micarta scales, whatever. Anyway, this is a uh, this is a standard linered version of the Sheepdog here, and uh, yeah, it does have a bit of differences. Uh, this one does doesn't have the flipper tab, so it is uh, a bit more similar than the uh, the very very original ones. But yeah. Handle scales on uh, the uh, the micarta one thinner. However, the blade stock on it is actually thicker. It might not look like much, but we have three millimeter blade stock thickness on normal and 2.8 here on um, the crossbar lock one. Uh, things have been pushed forward a little bit, uh, so I guess uh, measured blade length is a little bit different as well. This guy is. Uh, Oh, what did I end up measuring this guy at? 3.18, whereas I think this one was like 3.31 or something like that. Just a little tiny bit more. And you can you can kind of see that where the uh, the heels are a bit different between them. You can see, yeah, it was pushed forward a little bit um, as uh, making room for that uh, crossbar lock, which uh, loops around so it has a couple of prongs that stick off on either side of the uh, the blade tang there. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit heavier than, uh, than the liner lock version. Part of that's going to be the aluminum scales, but not all of it. It is, you know, just thicker in general, and they both have those liners. Um, you don't really want to have a crossbar lock, um, bearing a lot of force weight just on aluminum. It's not quite that strong. But definitely do love the, uh, the blade shape on there. Uh, I do like that you can uh, remove the thumb stud uh, because that does kind of get in the path just a very little bit. But yeah, heck of a lot of fun to play with. It's nice and comfortable. You can, um, you know, of course, choke up like you can on the uh, the non-flippered version right here. Uh, overall, as far as comfort, though, I, I think I still do like this guy a bit more. Of course, the blade steel on this one's going to be a, a heck of a lot better, but it was an exclusive, so I don't, I don't really want to count that as uh, one way or the other but both of them very very good knives however i will say that uh this guy because of the uh, the clutch lock and the 154 cm blade steel uh is a bit expensive i think they were about 107 bucks or something like that um whereas uh yeah this guy with the uh, the fancier blade steel and stuff like that was like uh 80 85 or something like that so uh you know you really really need to uh, end up wanting that uh that crossbar lock because it does add you know a, between that and the aluminum scales I suppose it does add uh, quite a bit to the uh, the price but hey you at least have a uh, reversible pocket clip it is essentially the uh, the same so it ends up working out quite well uh, it does land on the flats rather than any of the grooves there so that's all sorts of good actions all sorts of good on it as well of course uh, let's see. So I talked about the uh, blade length difference um, and the blade thickness difference. Yeah, this is 4.7 ounces compared to like, I don't remember what this one was, like 4.1 or something like that. Maybe 4.3, I don't quite remember. Uh, so it is a little bit heavier. Uh, it's 133 grams. Um, and it is a bit thicker. This is a 0 0.50 or basically the, the same thickness as the Spyderco PM2. Whereas these guys are thinner at like 0 0.38 or so. That's 12.8 millimeters for the thickness there. But still, fun knife. I think overall though, the uh, the aluminum crossbar lock versions are probably a little too expensive. 
Uh, obviously, I know that they, they have to uh, deal with the, uh, the research and development and uh, changing things up and all that sort of stuff. But, I mean, almost all the other normal 154CM or their previous blade steel versions of uh, the Sheepdogs were uh, less expensive. So, um, you know, it's something that you really need to make that choice for yourself, whether or not you like the, uh, the, thicker, the thicker boy here that uh, does allow left-handed uh, pocket clip carry, or if that's not all that important to you. But, yeah, there you go. There's the, um, the Kaiser uh, clutch lock version of the, uh, the Sheepdog. Uh, in all honesty, um, the thing that made me want to buy this more than anything else, purple color. It's a nice color. I like it. But, uh, all right. Next up, I got a couple of the things from a, uh, a recent sale on Blade HQ. So the first one I got here is this guy. It's the Civivi Nox, or NOX. I'm assuming that means nitrous oxide. You know, just, uh, whatever. Most of the time, you end up saying that it's, uh, due to its um, additive in uh, boosting engines rather than, you know, uh, the laughing gas that uh, a dentist would end up using or other people abusing or whatever. But um, this thing didn't exactly uh, excite me when it first came out uh, because it is essentially just a uh, steel frame lock. Because of that, for its size, it's a bit heavier than it probably needs to be. But still, this is an okay knife. Um, it is a little bit smaller than uh, I had remembered or forgot it being or, or whatever uh so yeah this is definitely a three finger knife uh maybe three and a half for someone with um small small hands and the action on this guy not super great uh i did try my best to uh kind of fix a bit of that i think it might be part of the uh the frame lock putting a little bit more force on it but we also have really really small bearings uh, in here which never really equate to uh, fantastic action on it we got their deep carry pocket clip decent uh, flipper tab there we have what i'm going to call definitely a sharpening choil if you can get your finger in there safely more power to you but uh, you may have little tiny baby hands because i think even a normal sized person's probably going to uh, creep up onto the heel of that blade that blade, though, is Nitro-V, so that's great, especially because I got this on sale for, like, 30 bucks. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Nitro-V, um, I don't know, uh, it, it's an okay blade steel. Kind of competes with 14C28N, has a lot of the same properties. It's a bit closer to the, uh, the exact spec of AEBL. Uh, it is a fork of it, but 14C28N does go a bit further. Uh, but still, they're, uh, they're fairly interchangeable between, um, blades, uh, for, for Civivi and stuff like that. No real problems there. The thing, as you can see, we have a deep hollow grind going on on the blade. That does keep it just a bit thicker behind the edge, uh, than you might get out of a full flat grind blade, but it's not bad at all. The, uh, the jimping seems to be decent. Um, it seems sharp, but, uh, not... It, it doesn't grab my thumb exactly the way I want it to. It feels sharp, but it's not digging in enough or something like that. I don't know. It's uh, a little interesting. Um, and yeah, this thing is uh, much more of a budget knife. We don't have any weight really even going on on the inside here. Nothing going on on the outside. And because of that, uh, this thing's weight and stuff like that could have made something interesting. But uh, they were definitely going for a uh, budget model um, design and all that sort of stuff. So we got 2.95 inch blade on this guy here. You're going to have less than that effective because I do measure from the, uh, the tip of the handle scale out there. And this does extend a bit further past it. But because of that, the plunge grind is all sorts of nice. So that's cool. Uh, this is going to be 74.9 uh, millimeters for the, uh, the blade length there. Uh, three millimeters on the blade stock. Uh, it's very, very um, synonymous with uh, Civivi blades. Uh, and yeah, 3.09 ounces here, or 87 and a half grams. Um, and I, I did mention that a little bit earlier. I'm sure they probably could have done a bit of weight relieving on the inside of these guys, or maybe some, I don't know, grooves or something like that. That would take more 
effort and stuff like that to make it actually look nice but there is definitely a way you could have got this thing down to that ounce and inch mark that uh, some people do really uh, prefer for um, uh, some EDC sort of things because of that it does feel just a little bit heavier than it, uh, it ought to be uh, it is a bit handle heavy uh, compared to where the finger is I uh, do need to move back uh, fairly far for that to uh, balance because of that, it does make that uh, the blade side of that uh, feel a little bit more um, nimble. Kind of almost works the way that like a, a large pommel on the end of a sword kind of would. But um, if you're looking for something absolutely balanced, this thing's not quite going to do it for you. Uh, but it is nice and thin. 0 0.35 of an inch or 9 millimeters exactly uh, thick. So very, very thin. And, uh, yeah, not bad. Just, um, you know, it does have a, a bit of that uh, smaller knife and um, uh, earlier Civivi kind of feel. So not exactly the uh, the crazy drop shutty kind of nature that uh, we get a little bit more spoiled with with uh, some more recent knives. Uh, all right, next up we have the Civivi Stylum. And... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, this thing's interesting. Uh, sorry for talking off axis here. I'm trying to... There we go. Uh, trying to pull off something that was um, out of the uh, direction of the mic real quick. But yeah, Civivi Stylum. So this is a, a nice lightweight design. If I remember right, this is a Ferrum Forge uh, design. Yeah, there we go. Um, interesting about this guy. It's using 10CR 15MOV steel. Which, uh, for all intents and purposes, is the uh, the Chinese equivalent to VG10. So it does have a step up uh, amongst um, 9CR, 18MOV, and definitely 8CR and all the uh, the lower stuff that are, uh, you know, 420 uh, equivalent sort of things here. And it's kind of interesting. This is a double detent knife. Ain't nothing, um, you know, really pulling its punches there. It is kind of smaller, so... Um, we don't have uh, amazing um, blade action going on here. And it's also using a uh, bleep bead blast. And it's a, a bit of a coarse one, so you do have a bit of texture on the blade. That does affect uh, the action because that continues on to the tang where you have a, uh, a detent ball on both sides that need to uh, go on that. It's pretty difficult to make a double detent knife that's crazy, crazy smooth and drop shutty because of that but we do have some nice jimping that goes all the way around some people like to do a whole bunch of those flips i generally don't but uh using it kind of at the top like a uh, a flip uh, a lighter kind of a uh, flick ends up working out all right a micarta on this uh fairly coarse uh canvas micarta so that does uh, add a decent amount of uh, grip to it overall uh, it is basically their, their same kind of a dried Play-Doh-ish kind of feeling micarta, but it is a bit more coarse. So it does add a bit more grip to it. We do have slightly proud liners on here. Generally not my favorite, but this is kept to a minimum. So it doesn't feel uncomfortable like those two liners actually, um, you know, digging into your hands or anything like that. However, this thing is probably nowhere near um, suggested for doing a lot of hard use. This is... You know, it's a stylum. It's much more of a, a, a small knife for doing uh, small EDC tasks and stuff like that. Um, one thing that I will say is uh, if you do kind of like a lot of that sort of stuff, uh, they have ad had some others that are fairly similar. This is the, um, the X-Arc, uh, which I think the Dogma or the Chronic or maybe both... Uh, we're fairly similar to this um, as well, but these are locking blades. This one has a hollow grind, but it's uh, a bit older, so it's in D2 steel instead. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's also a front flipper, but also locks. Has a bit better action and stuff on it. G10, not uh, micarta. But hey, you know, you do have uh, other options if this one in particular doesn't uh, suit your fancy all that much. What I do kind of like is they uh, extended the blade up quite a ways uh, before it actually starts. So if you do have your hands here and oops, that does disengage, it does keep your hands uh, fairly safe. Not if you're putting a crazy amount of pressure on it, but if it just kind of, oops, let's go, 
you're in no uh, issue of uh, getting cut, which can happen with a heck of a lot of double D tent knives. Not all of them. I think Kershaw's got one or two that uh, kind of solved a bit of that problem, but there we go. And we got a uh, quite the deep carry pocket clip. Uh, it would have been nice if they could have uh, swapped that over. I guess in this particular case, it would have messed with the uh, the backspacer a bit or something like that, and they didn't feel like tapping both sides of the scales. Hey, well, it is what it is. But, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, run through some specs real quick here. We got uh, 2.95 inches, uh, just like the, uh, the Knox. However, it is just ever so slightly longer uh, from handle to tip. This is a uh, full 75 millimeters, whereas this is 74.9. Yeah, very, very huge difference, I know. But <laughs> it is a little bit different. Um, yeah, 10 CR, 15 MOV, like I said, three millimeter blade stock, just like the other one. 2.35 ounces though. So this is uh, definitely under that ounce and inch mark. 66.6 .6 gram weight is what I measured. Usually I'll round to 0.5, but I really, I couldn't uh, help but uh, keep that at 66.6. .6. That just amused me too much. 0 0.44 inches for the uh, the handle, so a bit thicker than the uh, the frame lock knocks, but uh, you also get a heck of a lot more grip going on with it. That's 11.2 millimeters. So yeah, that was the uh, Civivi Stylum here. Next up is this guy, which I got a little bit um, uh, confused with this one at first. Kind of thought that it was an integral. Uh, it isn't. They did release that, and I do have it, but I'm, I'm not covering it in this video. But here we are. This is the, uh, the Mossinary MK10. Uh, outside of one design that um, Jelly Jerry had uh, recently done some work with them on, Pretty much all of these are done by Rattlesnake. Uh, I think the guy's name is Steve Chang or something like that. Uh, I think I think that's what I've heard. Uh, I haven't really uh, sought him out or looked to uh, do a whole lot of uh, conversating with him on Instagram, but he is apparently there. And uh, yeah, this one's uh, pretty interesting. However, it is a, a steel liner lock, something that I also didn't know about this knife when I purchased it <laughs> from uh, some of the uh, the photos, but. It's uh, it is interesting. Uh, I do have the the original uh, MK01. Yeah, that's the MK01, which does have some similarities. It's very very neutral in the handle, as the other one is. This one is uh, a bit larger overall between the uh, the handles, which I suppose are about the same, but the blade's a little bit longer there. Uh, this one's a frame lock though. All sorts of uh good stuff here um and we do have that same kind of a clamshell sort of design going on so that does keep it so that even if the blade is way up there which it looks like it is uh it's completely protected from uh the person who's carrying the knife so there's absolutely no chance of you uh getting a snaggle tooth off of that we do have an integrated uh, lanyard sort of thing in there. That might uh, end up roughing up um, your uh, lanyard material a little bit uh, over time. This is fairly well machined, uh, but still, it is going to be a little bit of an abrasion point there. So paracord might end up wearing out a little bit quicker than it would uh, elsewhere, but still, it's going to be there for a good long time. we got a couple of these guys on both sides. Just like this guy, they're designed for... Um, uh, uh, little tritium inserts if you can uh, get them like I've said in uh, previous videos they're a little bit more difficult to obtain however not illegal or anything like that here in the states it is a front flipper uh, only the uh, little uh, jimping does not uh, go up to the top but uh, you know that's fine with me um, a front flipper is generally not my favorite if it's the absolute only way to uh to open a knife because for me i need to uh end up pulling a knife out of the pocket resituating my hand to do the front flip and then resituate my hand again uh whereas if i'm dealing with uh, another knife or something like that well, let's use a sheepdog for example and uh, pulling that out i can immediately do that and i just have to adjust my hand once rather than twice so for me a front flipper is much more about the uh the fidget factor, uh, but it also keeps the knives 
uh, a knife nice and slim without having a uh, flipper tab sticking out on either direction. This kind of has a harpoonish kind of look, but it's way, way back here. It's designed much more for you to use as a thumb ramp uh, and works out quite well. It is a uh, very, very neutral handle here, um, and it does have a, a bit of a contouring going on on both sides. It's not the uh, the absolute most ergonomic uh, feeling knife there, but it is very neutral and versatile, so it works decent with the uh, the uh, the pairing knife grip, which you would also use for uh, chest compression if you're holding something and uh, wanting to pull it across that way or your saber grip, or your uh, pinch grip, or your hammer grip, and all that sort of stuff. Ends up working out pretty well uh, overall for all of that. Pocket clip also done pretty darn well. Um, tail mounted and all that sort of stuff. Has a decent amount of flex, and it's not just a, a single little point there. Uh, this was, I think, to my knowledge, the first one uh, that they've ended up switching over to 20CV from the, uh, the M390 that they did before. Chemically, they're identical, so, you know, there's no huge difference there. But I have noticed that uh, them and uh, quite a few other companies have um, uh, jumped over to using it rather than M390, which to me is interesting uh, for uh, some Chinese companies where you would think that M390 would be cheaper for them due to the, uh, the import tariffs being different uh, between, like, Austria, which is where M390 is made, and the here in the States where... You know, Crucible slash Niagara is where um, the uh, the CPM 20 CV is made, but I don't know. Maybe um, it also has to do with the fact that uh, they're purchasing. Um, a lot of companies are purchasing more and more 154 CM for a little bit more of their uh, their budget steals, which is also made by Crucible. So it's possible that they're um, they're saving on some uh, bulk purchasing or something like that. I'm not quite sure exactly how that works. But uh, it does seem to uh, be that uh, quite a bit more companies are using 154CM and generally follow suit with using uh, CPM 20CV instead of M390 for it. But uh, yeah, pretty interesting overall. Um, they do a, a pretty decent uh, job of their heat treat there. Um, they've even put on uh, some, uh, some Instagram posts and stuff like that. Showing that uh, yes, uh, they well they've done one um, testing some uh, some HRC uh, stuff using their uh, the Rockwell scales, showing that they're uh, doing a pretty decent job. That one, however, was just the 154 C or 14 C 28 N uh, fixed blade. But they've also shown them doing uh, cryo treatments and stuff like that for their uh, their higher end stuff here. So they're doing a, a step that at least Lion Steel back when they got in trouble weren't doing with them, um, trying to convert all of that uh, austenite and stuff like that uh, by doing the cryo treatment. So that's good. I haven't really had uh, too much problems with this stuff. It might not be the absolute best, craziest, um, almost custom kind of level of uh, M390 or 20CV. But for a production knife, um, it ends up working fantastically. So uh, no real complaints there. But, uh, all right, next one I want to talk about, and I'll probably take just a little bit here. Uh, it is this guy, and, uh, yeah, well, let's go ahead and get into it. This is a Bradford knife. This is a kitchen knife. Uh, this is using MagnaCut, which is something that I was interested in trying on a, uh, on a, uh, a kitchen knife. Um, I'm not a huge fan of this knife. I'm, I'm going to be straight up and honest with you. Um, there's, uh, some attributes and things about it that, um, don't really tickle me all that well. For one, it doesn't have the feel of a forged knife. This is a straight up thin stamped blade that they did minimal grinding on after, uh, doing some chafing on it and then slapped some handle scales on here. In this case, I got the, uh, the G wood handles, uh, which is literally just layers of, uh, wood non-specified and then a couple of different colors of uh, G10 in this case they called it blue G wood but it also has uh, gray and black in there um, and it's supposed to have things be a little bit more uh, stable I guess than standard wood which maybe and it does have the uh, the liners uh, on the inside of both of them being uh, starting with G10 so that does help a little bit and it does give a little bit of a wood feel to it but uh, it, it 
all intents and purposes, I'm, I'm not a real big fan of G Wood now that I've experienced it. Uh, I don't really see too much of a value, especially with the way that they've done the micro milling on here, that you wouldn't have got out of uh, just simple G10 or micarta or carbon fiber or whatever else. It does come with a, uh, a very, very simple leather uh, pinned and stitched uh, sort of a sheath thing for it, so that's kind of nice. Uh, so... After using this for a while, I will pull in a, a little bit of a cutting board. This thing has some flex to it. Um, I don't mind that on a, uh, well, here, I have some abrasive on that side, so I'll swap it over to the other side here. Uh, I don't mind that necessarily on a fillet knife or a steak knife or something like that, but this guy's head has some flex to it, and that's actually caused me to uh, trying to get through like a large cabbage or something like that, have the blade start to uh, bend a little bit on me, uh, usually when I'm dealing with the, uh, the thicker root end or something like that. Uh, don't like that at all. Um, the, uh, the cutting geometry on it is great, and it's nice for doing some uh some simple things and stuff like that but it doesn't have a huge amount of weight behind it uh the balance for it is a, a bit behind the pinch grip that's fine i suppose in general that does keep a little bit more of the uh the weight back there um and you do have plenty of length for that handle um you know i, I guess in case you want to use the uh the bad grip <laughs> for a knife or uh, if you do want to grip it back there, then that works out all right for a pinch grip as well. But I don't feel I have anywhere near as much control as if I'm actually pinching and gripping up on the blade itself. So the, uh, the geometry is not all that bad on it. It seems to have a bit of a distal taper and stuff like that. Probably why it ends up getting flexy and stuff like that over there. This thing holds an edge a heck of a long time. But, uh, yeah... Uh, here's another knife that uh, I picked up a little bit more recently. I'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, but this is the, uh, the Ontario uh, kitchen knife that um, uh, Knife Center has been uh, putting out there for quite a while. This is like a 9.5 inch chef's knife made out of 14C28N that they've been selling for like 17 bucks. And they're saying, this is an incredible value. And, uh, well, this thing, for one, dull as absolute rocks when I got it. There was a little tiny bit that actually had an apex here. But everything else, absolutely just not sharpened correctly. And this thing has even more flex to it. Uh, that and the handle isn't very ergonomic at all. I really don't like this knife. and don't really suggest anybody get it. But here's where I do come back to... The knife that I've been um, using basically all the time for the last few years at this point here. This is a Tucson TS-999, but uh, they do have some others. They have the 888 that was a Wong, kind of a, almost a clip point sort of thing. Um, there's the, uh, the 966, I think, which was the, uh, the Santoku version of it and stuff like that. These are absolutely fantastic. They don't have a designer associated with them, but uh, Raihi has been doing some uh, some other ones a little bit more recently. But yeah, 14C28N, nice and uh, large kind of a stock removal process here with the, uh, the sandwiched on uh, G10 with those little Damascus pins and everything like that. This has a lot of weight to it. Uh, the blade on this thing, not flexible, so it's not going to veer uh, out of where you're at. The, uh, the tip is all sorts of nice. Uh, you have a bit more of a, uh, a nice sweeping arc if you're trying to mince something, whereas this is uh, kind of a sheepsy foot sort of thing. So it really doesn't feel super good if you're trying to uh, do some chopping. Maybe for some, um, some herbs, but you're not going to get that uh, nice large lift uh, for getting through something like a carrot or some potatoes or any other kind of a vegetation or something like that. Uh, in general, this straight up European style knife, much more to my liking than uh, something like this, which is basically uh, how I would in my own shop purchase a, 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 a flat bar of uh, Magna Cut, um, do a bit of a uh, grind removal on it and then uh, making a simple handle or something like that for it. Uh, then this thing is like $279, which is 
was way too much. Uh, I really wanted to like it, which is why I ended up purchasing it. But, uh, man, I, I really can't suggest it. It is kind of a mix between a Santoku and a Chef's Knife. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it, it's just not his strong suit, um, designing uh, actual Chef's Knives and stuff like that. So... <laughs> It is not the one that I like all uh, that much. I do keep it around. It's nice for some light duty kind of stuff. And because it's made out of Magna Cut, and these guys do a, a, a pretty darn good job on their heat treat for my Paul's heat treating. Um, this thing will keep an edge for uh, just about ever. But it's nowhere near as much of a joy to use as uh, this little son of a gun right here. This thing is just absolutely fantastic. 14C28N on it ends up holding an edge a pretty good time. Uh, I have sharpened this guy a couple of times. I do feel a bit of a roll going on in there. This is uh, not treated to like 60 HRC. It's treated a little bit more on the uh, the European or softer side. So it does respond um, decently to a kitchen steel, which makes me think that it's probably around 57 HRC or something like that. But, uh, I mean... 14C28N is designed to uh, do good at cutlery tasks from anywhere between, I think, like 57 and 62 or something like that. It has a huge HRC range. And this ends up working out fantastically for it. You know, it ends up um, being a lot better than the uh, X50CR MLV15 German steel that, uh, you know, a lot of the other uh, uh, German and French knives uh, end up using. Uh, has just a uh, fantastic geometry and uh, balance and stuff like that. So yeah, this is still definitely the uh, the chef's knives that I that uh, I still end up suggesting for other people to pick up. But still, if you're looking for a, uh, a really really fancy blade steel for a chef's knife, this has it. But it unfortunately has way too many drawbacks as far as I'm concerned to make that be your daily driver. You're gonna have a much better time using a uh, a much more purpose-built uh, from kind of known designs kind of knife like this guy here. But, all right, yeah, I took a little bit longer on the uh, the kitchen knives, but I wanted to uh, talk a little bit on it. Yeah, I've scratched this up a little bit here. Uh, I did have a, a previous roommate who probably caused this uh, bit of roll that I need to uh, do some uh, kitchen stealing for. Uh, she had a uh, habit of kind of hacking at some things that were still frozen to try to separate them. Um, that's not generally all that great for a blade. You generally want to have something thought out first. Uh, but yeah, at least this, um, you know, ends up rolling it rather than chipping the blade, which, uh, something with a, uh, a higher HRC, like some Japanese knives or something like that, um, would, would have definitely had some more catastrophic failures end up happening. Oh, well, yeah. I guess another testament to how, how dang good these things are, especially for them being, what, somewhere around 40 to 40. 40 to 50 bucks when you can find them um and you know white mountain knives and uh uh the uh the seller on uh, amazon and uh some others uh seem to have these things fairly regularly so you know that's great if you can get a hold of one of these guys i absolutely suggest you do so but uh, all righty yep i talked uh, a bit longer on the other uh, chef's knife than uh you know, a standard five-minute review would be. But, uh, you know, either y'all are <laughs> bored and clicked off, or you uh, suffered through it with me. And, uh, well, I mean, either way, I appreciate you for at least watching even a little bit of the video, because, hey, I basically just do this for fun. But, uh, alrighty. Yep, outside of, uh, well, sure, I'll bring in all these guys here again. So we got the, um, the Magna Cut Chef's Knife from uh, Bradford. We got the, uh, the Mocenary MK10. We got the Civivi Stylum, we got the Civivi Nux, and we got the uh, the Kaiser uh, Sheepdog Clutch Lock and Aluminum here. So, uh, yeah, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. Subscribe, uh, please.